uh, good evening to you all uh, dear brothers uh, so last uh, weeks uh, for the past uh, few weeks uh, we've been studying about the lord's uh, second uh, uh, presence you see so we have studied a lot of things uh, about the lord's uh, second presence uh, that uh, some of the things what you have seen is uh, why jesus second coming is going to be there and the general expectations of the lord's second coming and uh, we saw that how jesus is going to come the general expectation is that uh, jesus is going to come up on the clouds so that everybody can see him literally with their eyes so that's the general expectation and jesus is going to come and blowing with a trumpet and all the angels with him he is going to sit on a white horse and come and he is going to also sit on the white throne having a sickle in his hand having a rod of iron in his hand and a fire coming out of his uh, you see mouth uh, so all these things uh, we have seen that these are all uh, symbolic language that is given in the bible and the bible clearly says that jesus second uh, you see uh, presence is not going to be a visible one but is going to be invisible one. why why is going to be invisible one if you see because uh, jesus is now resurrected and uh, is now in the divine nature he is not in the nature uh, as he came at the first advent now he is in the nature of which the heavenly father was having you see huh? can anyone tell me can anybody tell me what is the speciality of the uh, you see divine nature Uh, what is the thing that the uh, uh, bible says can uh, anybody see who is in uh, uh, immortality can any human being seen a immortal a spiritual being with their naked eyes no brother i cannot see yes nobody no can we cannot see, see it. very good brother so first timothy 616 it says no huh he who lives uh, in a unapproachable light whom no man has ever seen whom no man can ever see you see so that is the uh, unapproachable light that jesus is living so at the second advent he is not going to come in the same nature uh, you see but uh, he is going to come in a powerful invisible uh, a nature to rule on this earth uh, for a period of 1000 uh, years so such a spiritual being who is mighty how do we identify can we see with our literal eyes no no good so we can't see with our literal eyes so therefore in matthew 24 chapter what did jesus give us he gave us signs very good he gave us a sign to identify jesus second presence can somebody tell me what is the signs some of the signs you remember of the lord's second presence wars rumors of wars pestilences very good very good wars pestilences you see so there is no need for me to give any example today the war is lively telecast on bbc and cnn the ukraine russia war we don't know how it is going to get to turn but this is going to be a very severe you see effect upon everybody so the wars and uh, you see rumors of wars and pestilences you see so you also seen there's a great earthquake uh, that happened recently in nepal but unfortunately and fortunately we can say that not everybody are affected good okay home brother can you tell me any of the signs uh, which you remember about the lord's second presence home brother do you remember any of the signs Uh, yes, the uh, sun will like kind of uh, in a. Uh, I will I will tell in Nepali. <laughs> okay, tell in Nepali. Rasta or Rasta ko birud ma utni chan. Very good. So nation against nation. Very good. Next brother, any other sign? Um, like uh, earthquake and. Uh, good. Yes. Then. Any other you remember? Um, hmm. The lot of things we see, no? Yes. Ah. Uh, okay. I'll give you a clue. 
Jesus told about a tree, a tree that it will sprout again, it will flourish again. Which is the tree? Fig tree, brother. Very good. This is a fig tree. So Jesus uh, spoke about the fig tree. So when you see the fig tree blossom, yeah, remember that is very near. So what is the meaning of the fig tree? What is the meaning of fig tree in the Bible? And that represents Israelites. Yes, it Israel. represents yes the nation of Israel. So the nation of Israel was totally, you see, destroyed, but uh, it was uh, regathered uh, since uh, this is the second presence of our Lord. So these are the signs uh, which are very very important to identify our Lord's uh, second presence. So we are living in the days of uh, Lord uh, Jesus Christ. We are living. Uh, the days when the Son of Man is already returned and uh, he is uh, started to rule. So we are living in his days. Okay. So apart from this, we have seen a lot of other uh, signs like uh, knowledge shall increase. Correct? Huh? Can you give me any example of uh, increase of knowledge? Oh, brother. Can you give me any example, brother? Increase of knowledge? Like we have uh, many, um, uh, strong, yeah. so uh, there's a uh, many, um, technical, um, Very good. wisdom, yes. 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 Uh, and, uh, inventions, correct? No, yes, yes, the technology, <laughs> the inventions, you see, it's a lot of things. Sir. These are the examples. Very good, brother. Okay. Oh, Gopal brother, can you give me any example of, uh, uh, you see, man shall run to and fro. There are two things that it tells in Daniel. One is knowledge shall increase. Other is man shall run to and fro. Can you give me any example? What is the meaning of man shall run to and fro? Traveling. Very good. So, traveling. These are the important signs. So, the signs are very important to identify the second presence, not the second coming. Can you tell me which are the three Greek words to used to signify the Lord's second presence? Can you tell me the three Greek words, brother? Parousia. Very good. Epiphania. Very good. Very good. Apo Apocalypsis. Very good, brother. Very good. Uh, can you uh, do you know the meaning of it, brother? Can you tell me the meaning of it also? Mm, Parousia means uh, presence. Good. Epiphania means uh, like uh, like bright morning. Yes, bright shining. Good. Bright shining and apocalypse means uh, reveal, revelation. Very good, Very good. Revelation. Good. Fine. Okay. So now we are living in the times of Epiphania. So I'm going to speak about all those things in the coming classes. Okay. So good. So all these things you are clearly understood. Very good. So last time we importantly saw the time prophecy which are relating to our Lord's second advent. And we saw the prophecy, uh, how prophecies have been uh, related uh, uh, to time, you see. And uh, we saw about the Gentile times, isn't it? We saw about the Gentile times, no? hope you all remember. So. What did God say to people of Israel? I will punish you seven times. Isn't it? So, a time in the Bible means, you see, one year. So, seven times means seven years. Okay? In a year, how many days are there in the Bible? 360. Very good. 360 days. So, in seven years, you, know, you have 2,520 days. Okay, so for a prophet, one day means how many years? Home brother, do you remember? For a prophet, one day means how many years, brother? One year. Very good, brother. Very good. So, 2,520 days means actually 2,520 years. Correct, no? Okay. Can anybody tell me? Uh, when did the Gentile times begin? And when did it end? So the period of Gentile times is 2,520 years. When did it begin? 
and when did it end it started at 606 bc good it ended at 1914 ad very good but 1914 good so what happened in 1914 home brother very important war happened in 1914 can you tell me the name of the war brother right uh, so first world war very good brother excellent first world war see world war it was given by the world itself because this is a multi metallic worldly empire image the world structure was smitten was started to be hidden you see the lord returned and he made to smot to say he hit that worldly empires it crushed into pieces so therefore since 1914 only small small nations began to be established all over so that is one of the sign that uh, so and at uh, almost at 1914 our lord would have already returned okay very good so apart from this one we also saw you see one of the uh, you see uh, at uh, time prophecy about chronology we also saw no bible chronology since the creation of adam till ad 1 how many years do you remember 4128 years very good 4128 years okay now uh, what is the meaning of bc in the bible bc means what before christ very good excellent bc means before christ ad means in a dominion huh? not dominion va not uh, after death of christ ah is it uh, anno domino or after death of christ what is the meaning of it anno domino uh, why why not uh, after death of christ correct you what you told is absolutely correct i agree with you but why not after death of christ now if you say after death of christ then that uh, uh, that doesn't cover Uh, the period time period where jesus born until the death so, ah excellent brother very good so that doesn't cover the period you see where the period of a uh, uh, after birth of christ uh, you see till uh, is a uh, uh, you see a uh, death uh, isn't it uh, so that doesn't cover it uh, so therefore anno domino is the meaning of that uh, word and not uh, uh, you see Uh, it doesn't mean uh, you see after death of christ uh, see i'll show you the you see powerpoint presentation uh, see ad bc okay the center point is a uh, okay that's the where uh, the center point of it uh, okay generally everybody think that uh, after death of christ uh, actually if that is the case the major period we going to fix uh, uh, from the birth of christ to his death that is not shown in the chart at all actually ad means anno domino what is the meaning of anno domino it is a latin word it means in the year of the lord in the year where the lord was present okay good so uh, this is a uh, very clear so uh, so you all uh, remember uh, uh, the bible chronology well so how from the creation of adam you see uh, till ad 1 is how many parts we studied now eight division sarte correct huh? from adam till ad 1 it is eight parts so we have studied you see uh, about the eight parts in the uh, previous class uh, how it is uh, you see uh, correlating uh, uh, about the lord's uh, uh, you see a uh, date uh, uh, time prophecy uh, one minute give me time i'll just put the chart for you one minute Okay, we got here. Okay. Okay. So, uh, last time we studied, no, you see the eight parts 
I hope you remember. Okay. Can uh, I'll just uh, uh, ask a few questions. Uh, let me see how well you remember. Okay. What is the period of uh, from the creation of Adam till the flood? What is the period? Sixteen fifty-six. Yeah, sixteen fifty-six. Hope you all uh, uh, went through the notes. Went through the notes on the YouTube link. Is it uh, clear, brother? Yes, that one is. Uh, uh, Gopal, brother, clear, no? Yes, brother, clear. Okay, home, brother. I I didn't I didn't I didn't did sorry. Okay, not a problem. It will take time, brother, uh, because uh, see certain things and all is uh, not readily understood for the first time itself. Not an issue. Take time. Okay, go through the notes. So especially the notes. So as you keep on reading, you will get a more clear understanding. Any doubts? Any questions? You can ask. Ashish, brother, is there? We are there. We are always ready to answer. Okay, good. Now the second period is from the end of the flood till the covenant with Abraham is how many years, sir? 427. Very good. It's 427 years. Good. Now, from the covenant with Abraham, that means the, the day that God promised to Abraham that uh, in thy seed all the nations shall be blessed, from that period till the law is how many years? It is? How many years? 430 years. 430 years. That is given by Apostle Paul in one verse in Galatians. Good. So after the people of Israel took the law, you see, that is the first law, is the Passover. They, you see, they came out of Egypt. They went to the promised land. You see, they destroyed all the enemies and they settled in the promised land. So that period, it took 46 years. We saw now how they, they were uh, journeying in the wilderness for 40 years and uh, 6 years. Uh, you see, so total 46 years. So after they enter the land of Canaan, God gave them judges. Correct? Huh? What is the period of judges? 450 years. 450 years. Where is it given in the Bible? 450 years. Do you remember? Oh. I'll give you a clue. It's given in the book of Acts. Hmm. Any guess? Uh, definitely in Acts. Uh, Acts 13, 20. Good. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. So, very good. So, after the period of judges, they asked for the king. They told, no, you don't want judges, God. You please give us a king. Let uh, we be like other nations. So God gave them king. So who was the first king of Israel? Oh, brother, do you remember who is the first king of Israel? Oh, brother. Okay. Gopal, brother, do you remember who is the first king of Israel? King Saul. Very good. King Saul. Then David. Then Solomon came. So, since then, the kings began to reign. So, it was a period of 513 years. Good. Okay. After the period of kings, then what happened is that, uh, you see, they were taken captivity to Babylon. And that was a period of uh, how many years? A period of desolation. Hmm? How many years? 70 years. 70 years. Good. So, from the end of desolation, Cyrus king gave the commandment to go and build Jerusalem. Okay? So, since his first year reign, it is 536 years. So, if you calculate the entire thing, we get a period from creation of Adam. You see, till, you see, the AD 1 is a period of 4,128 years. Okay, good. Now, how this has got related to the Lord's second coming? Okay. See, dear brethren, we know the creation of God, that God created for how many days? Six days. Very good. Then, he rested on the seventh day. No? Okay, good. So, and uh, each and every creative day 
is actually a period of 7,000 years. We have, we have seen that one. Okay. So each and every creative day, I'm telling about the creative day. Remember that period which is mentioned in Genesis first chapter, that is a creative day. Each and every creative day is a period of 7,000 years. How many years? 7,000 years. 7,000 years. That can be divided into two parts. That first is a 6,000 years, then the 1,000 years. Okay, 6,000 plus 1,000, 6,000 plus 1,000. Therefore, in the Bible, how is it given? See, read Genesis, uh, Genesis first chapter, brother. Genesis first chapter. Home, brother. Read, brother, kindly, please. Genesis first chapter, brother. Uh, fifth verse. Genesis 1 5, brother. Uh, home, brother, can you read? Hmm. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning were the first day. Ah, you observe those words. It says evening and morning was the first day. At the end of each creative day, God mentions these words. Evening and morning was the first day. Now you tell me, when, when does the day begin? It begins in the morning or in the evening? Morning. Morning. Then God should have mentioned morning and evening was the first day. But instead of that one, God tells evening and morning. Why did God mention like this one? There is a reason. Because each and every creative day, when God began to create something, initially that creative process was very vague. It was not very clear. It was not very clear at all. It was very vague. Very weird. You see, it was not finished. It was unfinished. But as the days went on, you see, how? You see, what happened? Everything began to be very clear. So that period of, you see, very vague, where the creative process was still happening, that was a period of 6,000 years in each and every day. And that 6,000 years is compared to evening in the Bible. And the end of the, you see, each created day was a 1,000 years. Sir. When everything was created, when everything came to perfection, and more clear, more light, that was the, the like, uh, compared to morning. Therefore, now we have seen about how, why God permits evil now. Huh? In that one, we have seen, you know, God permitted evil for how many years? Huh? 6,000 years. Correct, now. And uh, at the end, what will happen now? Christ shall rule for a period of 1,000 years. We have seen that one in the Bible now. Correct, now? Huh? Hmm? Okay, we'll see. Yes. We'll see from. Huh? You, you are clear in that one, or uh, we need to more explanation for that one? Uh, yes, brother, clear. Okay, good. So, read Psalms chapter 30, verse 5, brother. Can somebody read, brother? Psalms chapter 30, verse 5. Psalms chapter 30, verse 5. Mm. For his anger in there for a moment, in his favor it lies, weeping may in there for a night, but joy come in the morning. Okay. But joy cometh in the morning. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. You see all the creations of God. What did God do? Six days you need to work, one day rest. Correct now? Six years you need to work, one year rest. Correct now? Huh? So read everywhere in the Bible. 6 plus 1, 6 plus 1, 6 plus 1, 6 plus 1. In the week, how many days are there? 7 days. 7 days. Huh? And the last day of the week is Sabbath. That was the rest day. Correct, no? So, these are all the significance that uh, each and every created day was divided into two parts. One is 6,000 years of, uh, you see, uh, very... Vague creation and a thousand years of more clarity, you can say. So even similarly, when God rested the seventh day, you see, that is the time, you see, that uh, the 7,000 years began to be, you see, counted. Correct, no? The 7,000 years began to be counted. And we calculated 
the period of the seventh day only in the Bible chronology. Since the creation of Adam, we calculated till AD 1. Correct? Huh? How many years? Huh? 4,128 years. Correct? Huh? So, in this one, we will come to know when the 6,000 years will end. Why? Because once the 6,000 years of evil will end, then immediately, naturally, what will happen? Huh? The 1,000 years uh, rule of Christ should begin. Correct? Huh? Huh? Now, you tell me, huh? what is the balance? What is the balance? You tell me, how do we calculate? Hmm? Gopal ah. brother, home brother, how do we calculate? Simple calculation. See, in 6,000 years, if you minus 4,128 years, we will come to know when the 1,000 years will begin. Correct now? Can you tell me? 6,000 minus 4,128, how much will get? 1872. 1872. Home brother, did you calculate? Is it clear? 1872, does it come 1872 or anything else, brother? See? Home brother? Yes, sir. 1872. Correct. Very good. So it comes to 1872. So in 1872, you see, what happens is that the 6,000 years ends. So since then, the 1,000 year reign of Christ should start. That means our Christ should have returned in 1872. Okay. Now we'll, we'll, we'll have more clarity on this one. Okay. Now here uh, we are calculating the period from when 4,128 years we calculated from the creation of Adam, not from the fall of Adam. Now, we need to see when actually Adam fell into sin. Okay? Actually, there was a two years period in which Adam lived in Garden of Eden. Now, how do you say that one? How do we, is it a, there is any scripture for this one? Yes, there is a Bible proof for it. Adam, when was Adam created? Let us read that verse further. Okay? Uh, Genesis first chapter Verse 26 and verse 31, brother. Then it says, first chapter, 26 and 31. Gopal, brother, can you read? Sure, brother. And hmm. God said, let us man make in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the, upon the earth. And God Very saw... Good, Wait, wait, one minute. Now, this is saying about the creation of Adam. Now, this was which day? Now, read verse 31, brother. Huh? And God saw everything that, that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Uh, evening and morning was the sixth day. So, when was Adam created? Was he created on the seventh day? No, on 6th day. Ah, he was created on the 6th day. So, now we need to calculate how many years Adam lived in the 6th day without committing sin. Actually, Adam lived in Garden of Eden without committing sin for 2 years. Now, is there any Bible proof? Yes, there is a Bible proof for it. One verse, let us read. You see, Genesis, uh, uh, first chapter. So we all know, uh, whom did God first create? Did he first create uh, Adam or did he first create Eve, Eve or did God create both of them together? First Adam. First uh, Adam. Very good. Brother. So first Adam was created. Then who was created? And Eve. Eve. Okay. Home brother, clear, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Now you tell me. Now, then Adam should have been alone in the Garden of Eden, no? See, he was created first. Until Eve is created, he must be in Garden of Eden alone. Correct, no? 
Yes, brother. Now, now let us see when God created Eve. Genesis second chapter. Genesis second chapter, verse eighteen and verse nineteen. Read, brother. Verse eighteen and nineteen. And the Lord God said, "It is not good that the man should be alone, and I." I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the garden, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought, brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Mm. See, God saw that Adam was alone. Then immediately, what did God do? Did he create you? No, he did not create you. Instead of that one, he told Adam to name all the creatures of this world. So, what did God do? God made all the animals to, huh? you see, huh? come before Adam. And what uh, Adam kept the name, that was the name of the animal. You see, what is the meaning of this one? Huh? It says, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. God brought all the animals before Adam. What type of animals? He would have brought a lion and lionesses. You see? Tiger and tigress. Correct? Huh? So, he would have brought both male and female before Adam. By seeing this, uh, all the pairs of animals, what Adam would have felt? Huh? All the animals are having pairs. All the animals are having companion. But I am not having any companion. He, he felt that urge for a life partner. Read next verse. is given there only. Verse 20. Hmm. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found any help meet for him. Ah, but for Adam, there was not found any help meet. Why? Because uh, till then, he did not get that arg. Huh? You see, seeking a life partner. But seeing all the animals with pairs and all, you see, having a, uh, you see, a beautiful family life. He had that, uh, you see, desire to have a companion for himself. Now, how did God create it? He made all the animals to pass before him. What do you mean by uh, pass all the animals before him? That means, you see, there are various animals that uh, actually, uh, you see, uh, seasonal animals are there. In winter, some animals come. In summer, some animals come. You see, then uh, in uh, spring, some animals come. You see, so various types of animals come in various seasons. So, you know what God would have made? For the entire year, in all the seasons, all the animals, God would have made to pass before Adam. That means, how he may, would have made all the animals to come before him and live, you see. In January, some animals, February, some animals, March, April, all the seasons, various types of animals, and based upon their character, seeing their character, observing them, you see, Adam would have named all the animals. How did he name all the animals? Sir? He did not name the animals just like that. He named the animals very wisely. You see, for uh, in the Bible, you see, uh, what is the name of, uh, uh, you see, the first man? What is the name of the first man? What is the name of first man in the Bible? Adam. 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 Very good. What is the name of the first woman in the Bible? Eve. Okay. Now, who kept the name Adam? Who kept the name Adam? Adam himself. <laughs> Adam himself. Okay. Home brother, what about you? Who gave the name Adam? I think God gave because he, he, he called him Adam. Good. Okay. Now, who gave the name Eve? Adam. Huh? You? Name was given by Adam. Huh? I think, yes. 
ओके होम ब्रदर टेल मी हु गेव द नेम ईव टिंक यस नॉट अ प्रॉब्लम इवन इट इज रॉंग नॉट अ इशू टेल मी हु गेव द नेम ईव होम ब्रदर टिंक Hmm. The God gave gave his God. Name. Okay, good. Okay, now let us see in the Bible. Okay, read Genesis five two. Genesis five two, brother. Ah, uh, home brother, read brother. Ah, uh. male and female created he created he them and bless them and call their name Adam in the. Uh, uh, uh. Call their name what, brother? Adam. Adam and Eva. A Adam in the day when they were created. So, he, for both male and female, what was the name given? Adam. What about Eva? What about Eva? <laughs> Even for you, what was the name God gave? Adam. 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 Very good. See, that's what the Bible says. Why we should reason out that one? Actually, you know what is the meaning of word Adam? Huh? Hindi me bolte hai na. Admi ke liye kya bolte hai? Admi. Huh? Bolte hai na Hindi me. In Hindi jaise na brother. Huh? Adam. Admi. Ah, that is actually. You see the original word Adam. You see, Adam is what human being. That word actually means human being. You see, so God originally gave them the common name. Now, what about Eve? Who gave that name Eve? You know, read Genesis three twenty. And Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Ah, now who was the one who gave you that name? Adam. Why did he give that name, particular Eve only? He could have called any other name, no? Honey, sweetie, cutie. <laughs> But why did he give the name Eve? Because she was the mother of all living. Ah, why you know? Huh? He would have observed Eve's character thoroughly, huh? and because of her, yeah, you see, he committed sin, and uh, he said, "This is the correct name for you. There is no other name, which is the correct name." He, you are the mother of all living. You see, you are the mother of it. So that is why Adam named that. You see, to so his beloved wife. God had named him. Huh? Both of persons had Adam, but he was given by him. You see, Adam. Why? Based on the character, based on their, you see, huh? the character, how they performed in the life, how they behaved, based on their behavior, his name was given. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you why uh, the, the, how the names were kept in the Bible. Okay, let us read one more example. Hmm. What was the name of uh, uh, his uh, uh, Abraham's son? Isaac. 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 Okay. Good. Isaac. 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 Good. 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 Okay. Good. Now, what is the meaning of the word Isaac? Why did uh, they keep that word Isaac? Why did they keep that name? Reason, reason, reason of um, love, loving, yeah, being happy. Very good, brother. Very good, um, brother. Super, excellent. Very good. Isaac means laughter. Okay, very good. Now you tell me, why did they keep laughter? Will you keep your son as uh, Mr. Joker? Huh? Will you keep your? We will. We will. Because keep they, as, they, they think that it was not a good uh, uh, age of to having a uh, like. Very good. Yes, brother. Exactly correct. See, when Abraham, you see, to so Abraham, when Isaac was born, eh, his age was hundred years, and Sarah's age was ninety years. Now you tell me, for any ninety eh, uh, years old, uh, you see, grandma or grandpa, 
can they beget a child can can they give birth to a child at the age of 90 years 100 years can they give birth to a child no it is impossible huh? if you go and tell any old lady who will be walking with a stick 90 years grandma don't worry tomorrow you will become mamma if you tell what she will do what she will do if you go and tell you an old lady don't worry tomorrow you're going to become a mother what she will do she will laugh. laugh correct she will laugh if she has not given to any birth if she has not given any birth to any child in her life the moment you tell this thing she will feel happy she will rejoice very happily that is what happened to sara she laughed she laughed her laughter why she had so much of uh, you see joy in the lord the given that, that this age god has promised me that he will give the child this was the same reaction with abram abram fell on his face and laughter you see he could not control his joy you see there was not a laughter of uh, you see teasing it is laughter of joy and faith on the lord oh my lord is going to bless me the romans 4 chapter is given okay now you tell me why did they keep his name isaac read in the bible let us read in the bible genesis <clears throat> before that one read romans 4 chapter brother romans 4 chapter romans 4 chapter na 18 19 20 romans 4 chapter 18 19 20 home brother or gopal brother anybody can read hmm read brother who against hope believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to the which was spoken okay. so shall thy see ah. me hmm and and being not weak in faith he considered not his own body now dead when now dead underline his body was dead there was no chance for him or sara to give birth naturally both were dead to give birth he believed against the belief in a hopeless condition he believed in the lord yes something will happen yes my lord will bless when he promised at 100 years i will have a child i will have a child therefore when a child was born they could not control the joy you know what was the name given isaac where is it given read genesis genesis chapter mm. genesis 21st chapter come brother genesis 21st chapter verse 3 and verse 6 brother verse 3 then verse 6 genesis 21 3 and 6 and abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him whom sara bare to him isaac isaac why read verse 6 and sara say god had made me to laugh so that Ooh. all that here will laugh with me all the dear will laugh with me what joy imagine so why did they give name isaac the word isaac means laughter okay so in the bible name has each and every meaning now why what is the meaning of jesus the word jesus can anybody tell me what is the meaning of jesus word jesus ashish brother can you tell me what is the meaning of word jesus savior very good savior why why why, why his name is kept as jesus because he saved us from sin so that is his character that is his quality you see ah that is the meaning of jesus now okay what is the meaning of uh, emmanuel home brother what is the meaning of emmanuel god with us 
Very good. Oh, God is with us through his son. You see? So it's got a character. Quality is there. So similarly, why I told you, when Adam named all the animals in Eden, do you think he would have simply kept the names like that one only? No. He would have observed each and every animal's behavior. You see? He would have observed giraffe's behavior. Based on that one only, he would have given the name the giraffe. Based upon the character of tiger, he would have given the name of tiger. Based upon the character and behavior of lion only, he would have given the lion. And why, why simply lion is made king of jungle? Compared to all the animals, this is the only animal that has the crown. You see? It has a crown. Which animal is having crown? Huh? Not any of the animal. See the majesty of the lion as it comes. You see? See the sound of the roaring of the lion. That is the reason it is called as the king of the jungle. You see? Even monkeys also have. But monkeys can't be given. You see? Just because they have a you see, ugly crown, they can't be named as the king of a jungle. There are a lot of reasons. Sir. You see? Is there any science student here? Science student? Anybody? Anybody have studied science in your college or school? Ashish brother, Gopal brother? Yes, brother. Ah, okay, good. See, in the science, there is a scientific name for each and every, uh, you see, you, human being or animals. You remember? Or plants also. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, very good. So, man is called as a Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. By nomenclature. So, why they kept that name? Significance is there. If you cut the body into half, it should be equally divided. So, characters are there. Based on that one only, you see, the biological names have been kept. You know, what is a biological name for mango? Mango, mango. We eat no. Arm. What is the biological name for mango? You know? Magnifera indica. Not Tata indica. Magnifera indica. Why? It has got a specific features. And you see? Uh, tiger also has got a uh, you see? scientific name. Why I am telling you all these things? If Adam would have kept the names for all the animals, God did not simply make the animals to just pass in a queue. You see, before everybody, he would, uh, you see, huh? he would have observed everybody's character, each and every behavior of the animal. And based on that one only, he would have kept the name. And to observe all the animals of all the seasons, definitely he would have taken one year. Why one year? Because in one year, all the seasons of this world are there. So all the animals would have migrated, all the animals would have come, he would have observed all the behavior. So when keeping the names, he saw that all the animals are having pairs. Male, female, male, female, male, female, male, female, everything is there. But what about Adam? You see? Huh? But Adam did not have any female with him. Then that Arg came. I want to have a huh, companion. Then God made Adam to go for a deep sleep and created huh, Adam. Sir, created oh, Eve. Okay. Um, read Genesis 2. Genesis 2. 21, brother. 21. Genesis 1, 23 read, brother. Sorry, 23. Uh. 123, brother. Correct. 223. 223. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Uh, she shall be called woman. Okay. So, what is the period of this one? This would have taken one year. So, one year, Adam was alone in the Garden of Eden without Eve. Okay? Still no sin has come into the world. Okay? Now, next what happened? Next one more year, you see, Adam was with Eve 
alone in the garden of eden you see is there any bible verse for that one yes for that one also scripture is there read deuteronomy 24 5 brother deuteronomy 24 5 read brother huh? Hmm. Can somebody read with her? Deuteronomy 24 5. Hmm. When a man has taken a new wife, he shall not go out to war, neither shall he be charged with any business, but he shall be free at home one year and ah. shall cheer up ah. his wife which he has taken. Very good, brother. So, after marriage, what is the leave period for a man? One year. Uh -huh. Very good, no? See? <laughs> At least, God is so graceful. Nowadays, for marriage, if you ask one month leave also, they won't give. But what did God say? If somebody marries, give them one year leave. So, when God had kept this law in the Bible, huh, for people of Israel, do you think huh, God would not have given Adam and Eve a grace period of one year in Garden of Eden? Definitely God would have given grace period for Adam and Eve to be together, to understand together, you see, in Garden of Eden. So, these two years, Adam and Eve, without sin, lived in the sixth day. So, after this only, sin entered into the world and what happened? Since then, the seventh day began to be counted. Now, what we saw above is from the creation of Adam till AD 1 is 4128. Now, if you cut short two years, take out these two years, we will get 4126 years. So, if you minus this period, see, I'll show you. If you minus this period from 6000 years, from 6000 years, if you minus 4126 years, we will get 1874. Okay? Instead of 1872, uh, from the creation of Adam, we need to take from the fall of Adam. Okay? From the fall of Adam, you see, the 6000 years ends in 1874. So, in 1874, uh, the 6000 years ends, and since then, a thousand years begins. So, this is one of the proof to see from the Bible, through the Bible chronology, that uh, 6,000 years ends in 1874. Okay? So, uh, we will uh, stop it here. Uh, there is other proof also. Okay? Uh, there are so many other proofs also which, uh, which uh, we need to uh, discuss. Uh, we will be uh, studying all those things in the coming class. Is it okay? Okay, so so the, the, this shows the 6,000 years ended in 1874 and the 1,000 years began since 1874. But we got other more clear proof also. Okay, so uh, time is not sufficient. At least we might need another half an hour time. If you are all free, we can sit uh, now itself or else we can see next week. So it's up to you. You need to decide. Gopal brother, home brother, need to decide. Okay, okay, so we'll see you next week. Or we'll see now itself. Home brother. Uh, Gopal brother, yes. tell me, you are free? Yes, I'm free brother. Okay, home brother. Home brother just put a message that uh, he's not able to listen to the audio. I think the network is weak. Home brother. I'm not able to hear you clearly now. Uh, I think network is down. Okay. Uh, Ashish, brother, tell me. Okay, I will call him. I will call him. Whether he's free. Okay. Him. Okay, I'll wait. No, no, no brother. I have just sent message that he is also free. Oh, he's also free. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, okay, good, good, good. Okay, then, then we'll we'll uh, we'll see. We'll continue. Okay, brother. Yeah. Good. Good, good. Super. Okay, I'm free. Okay, good. Thank you, home brother. Good. One minute. One minute.
Okay. So we have seen so many time prophecies, you see, uh, regarding Christ, first advent also, there was a time prophecy. But now we are going to see a clear time prophecy regarding a Lord's second advent. That is also mentioned in the book of Daniel in chapter 12. Okay. Now let us uh, please open your Bibles to Daniel 12 chapter. Okay. So in Daniel 12 chapter, if you see, there are three dates that are mentioned uh, in the book of, uh, you see, uh, Daniel 12 chapter. Okay. And the first date is actually uh, mentioned uh, in verse 7. Kindly read verse 7, brother. Can uh, Gopal, brother, can you read verse 7? Oh, brother, read, read, oh, brother. Good, read. And I heard the man clothed in line, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that lived forever, that it shall be for all time, times and, and half, and when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. Very good. Brother. Thank you, brother. So, we read about uh, time, times and half a times. Now, we already studied about this uh, time, time and half a times, that is three and a half uh, uh, times or 1,260 days in uh, Daniel 7 chapter. Correct, no? So, we have studied about 1,260 days in the class of Antichrist. Hope you all remember. Correct, no? You all remember, brother? Yes, brother. Yes. Okay. So, Daniel 12 chapter gives us a clue stating, you see, when, you see, he shall have accomplished, you see, to scatter to the power of the holy people, since then it shall be 1260 days or three and a half times. Okay? So we all know that uh, this is all uh, the same period in the Antichrist period itself, in Antichrist class itself, we are uh, clearly studied. You see, the three and a half times that is mentioned in uh, Daniel 12, chapter verse 7, it is the same period that is mentioned in Antichrist. Daniel, uh, uh, you see, uh, speaks, and the same thing is spoken in Revelation 12 chapter, verse 6, as 1260 days, and Revelation 12 chapter, verse 14, as three and a half years, and Revelation 13 chapter, verse 5, as 42 months. So both are everything the same. Okay? So this is also speaking about the same period. You see, for a cross of friends, we'll read one verse. Daniel 7 chapter, brother. Can somebody read? Daniel 7, Daniel 7, verse 25, brother. Huh? And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and think to change times and laws and they shall be given into his hands until a time and times and dividing a time. Very good. So he shall be given into their hands to persecute the saints you see, and speak against the most high for a period of time, times and half a time. So, same three and a half times. Read one more verse in Revelation 12, chapter 14. Revelation 12, 14. Revelation 12, 14. Hmm. And to the women were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from, from the face of the serpent. See, from the face of the serpent. The woman is the church who was cast away for the presence of the great antichrist system where she was persecuted and she was nourished and sheltered by God for a period of time times and half a time. So, same three and a half times. Now, we have studied, you see, that uh, all these uh, periods are the same thing. You tell it in the number of uh, days, number of months, number of years, 
everything is speaking about the same period about 1260 huh? you see days now for a prophet huh? one day is equal to how many years one year the same formula if you put it here we clearly know that the 1260 years began from 539 from 539 if you add 1260 years we will come to 1799 okay that is the year in 539 that the first you see the the breaking of the bread doing it every now and then began you see so that is the uh, beginning of the mass that is also called as abomination that maketh desolate in the bible since that period you calculate 1260 years we will come to 1799 okay now why that is called as abomination that make it desolate because once christ died on the cross he fulfilled the justice of god god's scale of justice demanded a sacrifice once christ gave the sacrifice it satisfied god justice after that one there is no need for any more sacrifice to be given again and again but the roman catholic church they claim and they began to conduct this mass every day saying christ has died for our past sins but for, for future sins christ must die again and they began to crucify him each and every time they broke this bread you see so that is called the abomination even after giving more sacrifices of Christ to God, even after Christ completely, you see, justifying his, uh, you see, justice, it is abomination in the sight of God. You see, read uh, Hebrews uh, 7. Hebrews 7, chapter 2. Hebrews 7, chapter Hebrews 7 chapter verse 27, brother. Hebrews 7, 26 and 27, brother. Huh? Hebrews 7, 26 and 27, brother. Go for brother, can you read? Sure, brother. 26 and 27, brother. Correct. For such an high priest uh, became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners and made higher than the heavens who needed not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the peoples for this he did once when he when he offered up himself himself he did once for all it is not necessary to repeat daily underline it so when you repeat it daily, even if God tells that don't do it, it is an abomination to him. That is the reason Antichrist is also called as abomination that maketh desolate. Jesus mentioned this one only in Matthew 24. Read, brother. Matthew 24, verse 15. Matthew 24, verse 15. Hmm. When ye therefore shall see the abominations of the solutions spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, whoso read it, let him understand. Mm. So it's called as abomination that make a desert. So Antichrist is called as abomination that make a desert. So we know this calculation, if you see, it ends in 1799. Okay, this is the first date that is given in Daniel 12th chapter. It says, from the abomination that make a desolate, the end of times is this period 1799 but also there are two more dates that are given in daniel you see read daniel 12 11. daniel 12 11, brother huh? and from the time uh, that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away and the uh, abomination that make desolate set up 
there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety ninety days. Ah, thank you, brother. It says very clearly from the time daily sacrifice is taken away. This is the daily sacrifice. Sacrifice of Jesus. It was daily, continuously. It was forever. But taking that value from the sacrifice of Jesus, and instead of that one, setting up the abomination, the mass, you see, since that period, that means from the same period of 539, it says, it is 1290 days. Now you tell me, from 539, if you add 1290 days, that means for a prophet, one day is equal to one year. What is the date we get? Add 539 and 1290 years and tell me. Eighteen twenty-nine. Very good. Eighteen twenty-nine. Home brother, you also got it? Eighteen twenty-nine. Home brother. Yes. Good. So, what happened in 18, 1829? Why this date is given here in Daniel 12 chapter? If you see, in 1829, a very important movement happened in this world. And that was the awakening of the Lord's second advent. That happened through William Miller. William Miller was a great preacher. In 1829, the Miller's movement was formed. It began in 1829. William Miller began to claim that in 1844, Jesus would literally come from heaven and take all the Christians to, you see, heaven. And hearing his preaching, believing his preaching, many of the Christians, you see, they sold off all their property. They Sacrifice everything for the Lord. Helping the poor, sacrificing, doing what all good things. So that in 1844, when Christ comes, they can go to heaven. So when 1844 came, they all went up. You see, they were put to wait their robes. They all were waiting for that uh, Christ to come and uh, take them to heaven. You see, but unfortunately, as they expected, 1844, Jesus did not return visibly. In 1844, Jesus did not return. You know what happened? Everybody were disappointed. Many people went back to the world. You see, they went back and what all they had given to the poor, they began to take it back selfishly and began to live a worldly life. So that was the William Miller's moment. It was a failure. What William Miller predicted was a failure. But this made an awakening call to the Christians. All the Christians were sleeping. But this thought about the second advent that we can study in the Bible, that caused a great awakening among the Christians. All the Christians began to be alert and began to study the Bible about the Lord's second coming, its purpose, why all these things and all. See, this 1844 is mentioned in the Bible. This prophecy about the failure of uh, the Lord's second advent in 1844 is also mentioned in the Bible. Where is it mentioned? Open your Bibles to Matthew 25th chapter. Everybody open your Bibles to Matthew 25th chapter. So, we all know very well that uh, Matthew 25th chapter speaks about a parable about the ten virgins. Correct? Read Verse 1, brother. Read verse 1. Hmm. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Underline. Where did they go? They went forth to meet the bridegroom. That means they know that the bridegroom is coming. So they began to meet him. That means they are waiting for the bridegroom's coming. So what happened? Among them, not everybody were faithful. Some were wise, some were foolish. The five were foolish, five were wise. Having the oils in the lamp and the, you see, huh? and in the, you see, bottles. You see, in the bags, isn't it? Some were having 
oil, uh, you see, in their lamps and in their vessel. But suddenly what happened, you know? Read verse 5. Hmm. Read verse 5 brother. Huh? While the bridegroom tried, they all slumbered and slipped. Ah. What did you say? While the bridegroom tarried. Read it in Nepali. Read in Nepali. Uh, Gopal brother, you have? I don't have here, but uh, I think... Uh, okay, read, read it in your English Bible. Let us see. How does it come in your English Bible? English Bible? Uh, ah, verse the, 5. Oh, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. See, tarried. <laughs> tarried means what? Uh, read, read in Nepali. Ashish brother, your mic is giving a lot of disturbance. Huh? Kindly check it. Oh brother, read it in Nepali. Tara Tulahale Dilu Gorda Ti Sabai Jana Nindale Lotta Boy Ra Nidae. Super na? Huh? Read it again? Huh? Tara Dulahali Dilu Gorda Ti Sabai. Ah, Dilu Gata. Adada. Same same word. Dilu Gata means what? Waited. It did not come in time. Correct now? That is the meaning now. Yes. Ah, see, I can understand a little bit of Nepali. <laughs> Good. Okay. See, what is the meaning of that one? The meaning means Christ was supposed to come at that time, but he did not come. He delayed. Correct, no? That is the meaning, no? Gopal, brother, you understood, no? Yes, brother. Ah, so Terry means what? He was supposed to come. But did not come. He came a little bit late, it seems. That is speaking about the William Miller moment. Jesus was supposed to come in 1844. He did not come. He delayed his second coming. Why? Then what happened? So you see, it says, all slept. All began to sleep. Now, next verse you read, brother. Gopal, brother, read. Verse 6, what happened? Verse 6, Matthew 25, 6. Uh. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Ah, wait. Behold the bridegroom. That means, where is the bridegroom? He is there only. Correct, no? Go to meet him. That means, bridegroom is here. You all go to meet him. So, when did the bridegroom come? What is the time given there? Midnight. Very good, brother. Midnight. Home, brother, did you observe? It is given midnight. Correct, no? Correct, no, home, brother. Midnight. Correct, no? Yes. Now, you tell me, when does the day begin? It begins at what time? Um, six. Uh, no. After two wells. Correct. When do when do the people celebrate New Year? New Year? At twelve o'clock. Correct. That is the midnight. When the point the day changes, that is called the midnight. When the six thousand years ended, when the midnight the six thousand years ended and the thousand years began to be started, that is the time that bridegroom. Already was present there. Everybody said, Behold the bridegroom. Behold, you see, he is the bridegroom. He is here. Behold the great bridegroom. Go to meet him. The church was told to prepare to meet the bridegroom. When? In midnight. What is the date of the midnight? That is the other date that is mentioned in Daniel 12 chapter. Read. Daniel 12, 12, brother. Read, brother. Gopal, brother, read. Daniel 12, 12. Uh. Blessed is he that waited and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days. See, he says, blessed is the man who waited for thousand three thirty five days. So, from 539, if you calculate, 
1,335 days, where you will come to? Calculate and see. 539 plus 1,335, where it will come to? Home brother, calculate and tell me. 1,335 plus? Huh? Uh, 1,874. Very good. 1,874. Home brother, did you get 1,874 correctly? Yes. 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 We saw Bible chronology. 6,000 years ended in? 1874. Correct, huh? Same period here, you see. This is not magic. See, these are all Bible prophecies. See how many scriptures are correlating, brother. You see, the Bible Quran is there. Daniel 2nd chapter prophecy is there. You see, and Daniel 12th chapter prophecy. He says, what does the Bible say? Blessed is the man. Why blessed? Because that is the blessed year that our Lord returned in 1874. In the midnight, there was a cry saying, Behold the bridegroom. Then what did the people do? You see? Read verse 7. Matthew 25, 7. Read. Huh. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Ah, all the people began to trim their lamp. Lamp in the Bible means Bible only. Word of God. They began to search the Bible. Why 1844 failed? Why what happened? So they all began to search. They realized that uh, Christ was supposed to return in 1874 and not 1844. For 1844 and 1874, how many years difference? 10 years. How many? 74 or eight, 74 and 84, brother? 74 and 44. Uh, 30 years. Very good. Why 30 years? You think. Next week we'll see. I'll give you a clue for both of you. So for three of you, I'll give you a clue. Same parallel happened in the first advent. There was a difference of 30 years. Think what is the difference of 30 years. Same at the second advent, 30 years difference. It's all beautiful parallel. Are there. Many things are there. Many, many things are there to speak to you, but we don't have sufficient of time. Okay? God willing, we will see you face to face and teach all these things and all. But now, let us stick on to these points. Okay? So, a lot of things are there. A lot of things are there. A lot of things are there to share with you and discuss with you. So, the blessed thing is in 1874, our Lord returned. You know what happened in 1874? Huh? You see? The three dates. From 539... 1260 years is the end of Antichrist period, 1799. From 539 to 1290 years is 1829. That is the William Miller movement. That is the time the second Adventist was formed. You see, the awakening of the second coming. Then from 539, you see, 1335 days is 1874, the second presence of our Lord. Okay? Now, you know, what was the first thing that was invented in 1874? What is that one you see in the image? Bulb. What do you see on the screen? Huh? Bulb. Bulb. First electricity bulb that could glow for a longer period was invented in 1874. You see, what does the bulb give out? Home brother, what does the bulb give? The light. Very good. Light. Gopal brother, it gives light, no? Yes, brother. Definitely. You tell me, who is the light of this world? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Does the Bible say that at 1874, you will come as a light? Is there any Bible proof for this one? Yes. Bible proof is there. Read Revelation 18.1. Read Revelation 18.1, brother. Read, brother. One brother, read, brother. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Mm. You see? What happened in Simsa? Huh? An angel came from heaven in Simsa. 
Who was this angel? Is it a normal angel? He is having what power? Great power. Great power. Very good. What did Jesus say? All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. Matthew 28, 18. Right now? So Jesus is going to return with all power at his second advent. Jesus said no. Huh? Jesus said that no. Huh? Read Luke 17. Luke 19, 12. 1915, read with her. Huh? Look, 1912, you read, and 1912 also you read. 1912 and 1915. Look, 1912 and look, 1915. Hmm. He said, Thereof, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. Okay. This is Jesus Christ. Went to far country heaven to receive a kingdom for himself and return. So when he returns, how does he come? Read verse 15. Hmm. And it came to pass that when he was written, having received the kingdom, then he commanded... Okay, sufficient. He came with his kingdom. He went to receive the kingdom. When he comes, he returns in his kingdom. Therefore, this verse says, he came with great power. And as soon as Jesus came with great power, what happened to the earth? Read Revelation 18.1. Continue, brother. What does it say? Revelation 18.1. What happened, brother? Read. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Ah, lightened with his glory. What do you mean by light? Did Jesus blow a light? One is the literal invention of the light. Other meaning of light. You know, what is the meaning of other meaning of light in the Bible? Light means what? What is the symbolic meaning of light in the Bible? Wisdom. Very good, brother. Super. Very good. Huh? Wisdom. Understanding. When Jesus came at his second advent in 1874, wisdom increased. Knowledge increased. What did Daniel say? Daniel 12, 4? Knowledge shall increase. Man shall run to and fro. Just see the invention since 1875. Go and search in the Google. Each and every invention, each and everything you can see in your eyes, it is all invented in 1874 the market. Everything, even a single pencil, pen, everything, whatever you use, even the specs, each and every, the buttons, each and everything, the cotton, the shirts, what all we use, you imagine, dear brother, everything we use in our day-to-day -day life, all these things are the invention since 1874, dear brother. These are all the clear signs before us. That uh, our Lord returned with a great power to establish his kingdom in 1874. Apart from this one, there are other proof also. Okay, We will discuss about all these things in the next coming class. I will share you all the PDF for the same coming notes. So please go through it. Any doubts, any clarifications, you can call me or call Brother Ashish at any time. No hesitation. Don't feel anything. Uh, about uh, uh, ourselves. So we have no hesitation. We want all these things to be clear. Okay. Uh, any doubts, brother? Gopal, brother, home, brother, any doubts, any questions you can freely ask? I'll ask you later, brother, after going through the PDFs and videos. Okay. Okay. I'll, give, I'll, give, I'll immediately give you the notes. Any questions you ask, brother? Okay. Uh, but as per today, till now, do you have any questions? Uh, no, brother. I was clarified by brother uh, Asis. Good. Good. Okay, brother. Thank you. So, okay. we will see you next week.